You know, one of my favorite things to do with clients is to come into their business and help them figure out ways to save money. And you know, a really easy way to do that is through Microsoft 365's shared emails and groups. So I'm gonna show you how to set those up and save you upwards of $40 a month per subscription if you're set up improperly. So follow along with me as we hop onto our computer and let's get started. All right, as we jump in and we start to save money in Microsoft 365, I do want to remind you guys that you can follow us on all the social media platforms at Next Tech NT. We have Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, if you do like this video and you find it helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I really do appreciate it and it helps us out to create more videos like this to support your business. So as we do move in, I do want to say Microsoft has done a really good job as opposed to Google in letting you choose different subscriptions per user. So if you just need email, but you do need all the features, you can pay as little as $5 a month. If you do need all of the features for users, you can choose one user and pay that 40, 50, $60 a month to get literally everything. So make sure that you have the right license on each user also. That's a great way to save money. But what we're focusing on in this video is shared email in groups. So let's go and hop over to the computer and I'll show you what that is. All right, guys. So first things first, you want to make sure you log in and you want to log into the website. It's login microsoftonline.com. Once you're logged in, you're going to be shown this screen and you're looking for an admin button right here. If you don't have that, it's because you're not an admin on your domain. So contact your IT department and maybe they can help you set up a shared email account. So go ahead and click on this admin button. And so, like I said, we're talking about groups and we're talking about shared emails. So what we're going to look at is groups right here. And you'll see here, there's a spot that says active groups. So this is one way to save a little bit on money. So as you can see here, I do have different groups. And so there are really four different types of groups that we have in Microsoft 365. So if you click add a group, it's going to list all four. So Microsoft 365 groups, uh, you can email to collaborate. Uh, you can also use a Microsoft Teams with that, like it says here. Um, so you can kind of put people in a group and allow them also to continue discussions and stuff like that. The other area is distribution. And this is just an email distribution list. So if you were to say text, at nexttechconsultants.com and it was a distribution group. It just emails to all of the people inside of that group and sends them the message also. So I can email texts and get all of my texts and give them, an, give them a message. The other is mail enabled security group. So this is a group that you can use in SharePoint as a security group, but also receive email. So that's kind of helpful if you're gonna have like, different permissions in terms of like, hey, this is my HR department and I have HR at mycompany.com. But I also in SharePoint, when I'm sharing files and doing all of that, I have an HR group I want to be able to share to. So that lets you set up both in this case. The other one here is security group. So this does not include an email address. This only includes the ability to set them up as a security group in other areas of Microsoft 365. So that's the four type of groups. And the one I would recommend choosing is either Microsoft 365 or distribution in this case. So those are the two that we're going to use. Microsoft 365 will just give you the ability to use Teams. Let's go and click on distribution for this one. So we're going to click next. You're going to give it a name, which the name does not necessarily mean it's the email address. So we're going to say we're actually just going to call it like it's default. So we're going to call it a new group. Distribution description is test group for video, click next. And this is where you set up the group email address. So this would be like new group. You can call it whatever you want. Make sure it's available. And this checkbox is important. Do you want to allow people outside of my organization to send emails to this distribution group? Is this internal or external? That's what we're asking. Um, I'm going to leave it internal. If you want people from the outside, just check that box. It's pretty simple. Uh, so we're going to check it, click next. And then it gives you a little description and you click create group. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it. And after a little bit, it's not right away, but you will see new group shown up right here in your list as a distribution list. So anyone you put in this group, you click on it and you can assign members right here. So view it all and manage owners is right here. So if you want anyone else to be able to manage the group, this is where you would add them. If you want people to just receive the emails and that's it, you're going to say, I'm going to add a member. 
and you're going to click them and add them. And it's as simple as that. So now they're in the group. So if anybody were to email new group at nextdeckconsultants.com, it would go to me and Anna. So now I want to talk about the next part is shared mailboxes or shared emails. But Microsoft has done a really good job to allow you to set these up in the admin console. What's really nice also is if you're in Outlook, they'll just pop up on the left side. You don't have to change anything. Once you're assigned to the shared mailbox, you're allowed to use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over, we're going to set one up and I'm going to show you where it shows up in the Outlook app. So let's go ahead and hop over the computer and do that now. All right, so we're back here. We click on groups and we go down to shared mailboxes. So once we're in shared mailboxes, we're just going to add a shared mailbox. I'm going to type in the name. We're going to call it a uh, new shared mailbox and call it right there. We're just actually going to give it this email address, but you can make whatever you want. Um, give it the domain, click save changes. And that's it. It's really, it's going to create it for you, but don't forget, we do have to assign permissions. So when this comes up, we're going to click add members to your shared mailbox. I'm going to click add and we're going to add myself and go ahead and add it. So now that I'm added to it, I can close this. Uh, and if you do want to see it, if you click on it again, and now that it's added, you're going to go down here. You're going to see a spot that says read and manage permissions and send as permissions. So that means since I added myself in the group, these permissions, I'm allowed to do. That's really what you need to be able to use this group properly. And now what's really cool is if you click on your Outlook app and you open up Outlook, you're going to see the group after it refreshes. It might take about 60 minutes to get there, but once it's all set up, it just shows up for the person in Outlook. It's right there. So now you can see here that I have the new shared mailbox and any email that's flowing will show up in this shared mailbox. Just like you can see here, there's a test. So it's just like any other mailbox that you have, but it's free and it just shows up for you and works as long as you are assigned as a member. So if you don't use Outlook and you want to get to your shared mailbox, go ahead and go back to your Outlook web app, which is outlook.office365.com. Once you're there, you'll notice in the top right, if you click on the, your initials, you'll see a spot here that says open another mailbox. It pops up and we're going to type new share. Oh, if I can spell new, new shared mailbox you click that and open and it's just going to open in a new window for you and it's going to be managed just like your mailbox would be so that's super simple and easy to use i hope this video helped you out in some way and remember we are consultants so if you're having issues with your licensing you're not really sure how to move forward or you just want to switch your building around um, so you can save a bit of money, we can definitely help you out. So go ahead and reach out to us at support at nextsecconsultants.com and we can make sure that you're set up and saving as much money as you possibly can. But if you did like this video and you'd like to give it a thumbs up, go ahead and do that now and subscribe to the channel to help support us so we can make more content like this to support your business. I really do appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you so much.